Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar. I'm Charlene O'Hanlon, moderator for today's event, and I welcome you. As always, we have a great webinar on tap, but before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items we need to go over. First of all, today's event is being recorded, so if you miss any or all of the event, you will have the opportunity to access it later on. Following today's event, we will be sending out an email that contains a link to access the webinar on demand. And we are taking questions from the audience. So if at any time during today's presentation, you have a question for either of our speakers, please don't wait, don't hesitate. Just use your GoToWebinar control panel and submit your questions. And we'll try to get to as many as we can near the end of today's webinar. Also at the end of today's webinar, we are going to be doing a drawing for four $25 Amazon gift cards. So please stick around. Hopefully you'll be one of our four lucky winners. All right, with that, let's go ahead and kick off today's webinar, which is all the ops, data ops with GitOps. Our speakers today are Andrew Stevenson, who is the CTO of Lenses.io, and Spiros Economicus, and I hope I got that right. Uh, he's the cloud lead over at Lenses.io. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. No, thank you. Yeah. Great, great. Andrew, I know you're going to be kicking us off, so I'm going to take myself off camera, put myself on mute, and let you get to it. Yeah, okay then. Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Um, so as Charlene said, this is a presentation about all the ops, data ops, with GitOps, but Kafka streaming, with a little bit of DevOps, I suppose, sprinkled in there as well. So, who am I? I'm, I'm Andrew Stevenson, uh, I've, CTO, I've got a background in, well, a lot of real-time data, C++, big data, contracting, but always essentially doing real-time streaming data with messaging systems of some sort. We also have Spiros as well, so Spiros is uh, leading the cloud at lenses.io. So, what is Lenses? What, what we're all about here at Lenses is actually delivering data intensity on top of Kafka. Um, although not only Kafka, because there's more to your system than just Kafka. So what am I going to talk about? Well, I'm going to give a brief introduction, very, very brief, into what is Kafka. Maybe you don't know. Maybe some of you know. That's not the purpose of this talk. The purpose of the talk is how we actually do data ops on top of lenses and actually where GitOps fits into this picture and then lenses, uh, sorry, Spiros will actually do a demonstration of that with lenses on top of Kafka towards the end. So what is Kafka? Yeah, it's a distributed commit log. That doesn't make much sense to a lot of people, which is fair enough. So what is a distributed commit log? Um, well, actually what it is, it's just an append only log. So what Kafka is, it's a set of brokers, a set of machines that you will deploy. You also potentially have things like Zookeeper in there, schema registry, and maybe other services such as, as Kafka Connect. But at the heart of what Kafka is doing, it's all about transferring effectively data. And it does that by writing data into something called a topic. And that every message that is written in is written in an append-only fashion. And each message has an offset. And what Kafka does is to scale is it actually breaks these topics apart and distributes them across the cluster. So each broker in the cluster is the lead broker for a part partition. So what you do is you decouple the producers and the consumers. The producers can write to whatever topic they want to, providing they've got the robust access permissions is something Lenses helps with. Consumers then can consume at their own pace as well, so they can decide to consume from the start of the queue or only the latest messages as well. There's also a notion of a consumer group. So you can have a set of consumers that are grouped together and you get um, fault tolerance and failover in case one of the consumers dies. So that's it. I don't want to go much further into Kafka and what it is, because uh, there's a reason for that, right? Um, what I want to look at is what what does it look like at the high level, right? Because everyone wants to build a data platform. They all want to be data driven. Um, so what does it, what, where does Kafka fit in this? Well, predominantly it's a buffer between the source and the sync 
data source and then you have processing on top of it right you want to maybe have a microservices listening for messages or maybe you're doing some sort of stream processing for example lenses we have our own SQL processes that we can deploy out so at a very very high level that's what your your architecture looks like but yeah um we're not that interested in that we want to actually focus on how it is that you actually deploy your applications so this is what lenses does right because we have all this stuff at the bottom we it could be kafka it could be elasticsearch hadoop you name it every data store uh, imaginable can be be sat in your data platform you also have other things like kubernetes for example yes i've got kafka but where do i actually deploy my applications so you have other parts that make up the data platform such as kubernetes you also need to have things like your secret management where are you putting all your secrets and of course you have all the different providers such as amazon msk now that's great that's awesome stuff but what lenses is actually focused on with the data ops and the git ops is how do i actually make use of all that awesome software that's being provided so what lenses does we provide platform administration right so managing the creation of things like your topics kafka managing the visibility that you can see into different systems we have our own sql engine for example so we can explore the data and we can control that with raw based security and this pushes beyond kafka as well we can actually do this on redis although it's not turned on apache pulsar we have support for elasticsearch as well and more is coming there so we also give visibility into your data because it's all very well saying yes i've got kafka isn't it awesome look how fast i can scale and add a new broker but if the tenants and if the people with business context can't actually see the data and can't actually use the data um it's just a big black box and we want to get to the point where we're actually all about delivering data-driven applications so we also do the deployment of the data-driven applications so lenses can also deploy applications we can deploy for example our sql processes into kubernetes we can deploy connectors right because you've got to get your data into kafka somehow and then you probably want to write it out to something based on what your data mesh architecture is um, and you also need to monitor that as well so we package all of that together under a security and governance layer as well so we provide a multi-tenancy for example on top of kafka which you don't get out of the box so for example let's say you're a trading firm i've spent a lot of time in, in the financial industry you have traders in the us and maybe you have traders in the netherlands and you don't want them to see each other's topics well we can actually do that for you as well so we also work on any kafka so go to aws we will work with that go to uh, azure we will work with them if you've got it on premise we will also work we'll also integrate with kubernetes for example yes where you're going to deploy your applications to kubernetes is very good for that so we can deploy into kubernetes or openshift if you have that we also have a large collection of connectors so if you are using kafka please go and visit the stream reactor project they're all apache 2 open source connectors that you can use also please have a look at a, a component in there called external secret provider so we have external um, secret provider integration with azure secret manager with hashicorp uh, vault and also azure key vault as well so we're making sure that you're actually protecting your secrets it looks secrets up at runtime so you won't actually leak them because kafka connect will expose your secrets via the apis as well so i've been talking about kafka well actually deploying kafka's not that interesting like i say it's not the focus of lenses um to do that we're interested in what's above that because that is the constant right you may be using kafka now in a couple of years time you may be using pulsar or you want to go to reddit streams or whatever else comes next right you're still going to want to fundamentally move data around and process it so deploying kafka you know it's it's not easy um but it is a pretty well trodden path right you can do it in whatever 
um, to you want, you know, Terraform, Chef, etc., Ansible, right? Cloud formation, which is effectively what uh, MSK are doing as your resource manager for HD Insight Kafka or Strimsy, right? You know, there's there's various ways you can manage and you can deploy Kafka itself. Like I say, we're not we're not too interested in that. That's been around for a long time. So what I call this is actually this was what I could wasn't what I call it's actually what Satan Adela calls from um, Microsoft who's the CTO. He calls it tech intensity, right? So there are numerous um, vendors out there selling tech intensity, especially for the real time streaming space, right? So we have Amazon MSK, HD Insight, Ivan is another example. We have Confluent, for example, as well, Instra Cluster, right? There's a few out there and they're providing a managed Kafka service for you. So you can deploy it and they will look after all the nitty gritty for you as well. But the key point here is it's now a commodity. Let's just use it and let's get focusing on them um, actually building the application landscape. So if we're not automating Kafka, then what are we actually automating, right? What is, what is the data ops? What is the Git ops in this? Well, yes, I've got my tech intensity, great. I've got Kafka, I've got Kubernetes, I've got uh, Key Vault from Azure, right? Whatever I need there, the, the data layer. But what about actually the application landscape? So this is what we're talking about when we're building up the data intensity. So I have my data entities. These could be things like topics, right? In Kafka, they could be things like Elasticsearch. How do I also then provide the governance and the security around that? For example, right, maybe I want to find everywhere this credit card number in my data sets across both Kafka and all the different systems that um, it's attached to. How do I apply the obfuscation on that as well? You also have the alert, data alert rules, right? This is not infrastructure alerting. What I'm talking about here is actually alerting that has data context. So to give it the example I always give here is, let's say I want to listen to Twitter and I want to listen to Donald Trump, right? You know, not to get politically um, involved here, but let's say I'm listening to an important person and there's a lot, should be a lot of data coming in. There should be a lot of records streaming in from Twitter, you know, every minute, but this is data context. So you also need to put the alerting around that. And this is something Lenses does as well to say, you know, for example, if I'm not I'm only getting one message every minute, something's gone wrong, right? So there's a data context that we need to put in there that's not monitoring and it's not your traditional alert rules from let's say a traditional DevOps um, viewpoint. This is data alerting based on data um, context that only the person who builds the application and the data pipeline knows. And also we want to actually deploy and manage the data applications as well. But we also want to manage and deploy those data applications in accordance to any role-based security that is being put in place. So this is everything that is sitting above the tech intensity layer. And to actually automate these is where we start to build up the data intensity. So how are we automating at the moment? Uh, very high level, uh, you know, I'm, Spiros is gonna show you some more technical details later. Um, most people are pushing, that's fine, okay. Um, they're pushing to Git and then that's triggering Jenkins and Jenkins is running and maybe it's creating a topic using the command line tooling from Kafka or maybe it's deploying an application as well. Um, However, there's some serious questions here, and especially when you try to scale it at a large enterprise organization. Um, are you sure you want to give your CI CD system access to your production environment and poke more holes in your firewall? Jenkins is not exactly um, free of security flaws. And also there's another question, who actually resolves your desired state? I've got Git, that's my source of truth actually, um, but which component is actually deploying it? Are you having to build more and more logic 
business logic into something like Jenkins or whatever tooling that you have as well. So this is push again, it's very high level. Um, we're not trying to teach you how to do CICD at the moment. Um, for Kafka, we also have plenty of Kafka operators out there. For example, Strimsy have one as well. This is still okay, right? Yeah, I'm. it's sitting inside our environment, so there's potentially less holes in our firewall, um, but it's still, it's still pushing to Kafka, okay? Inside the environment, we, we can live with that. But outside of it, we still have Git. That's where our source of truth lives. That's where our desired state is lives. Again, you may have something with Jenkins, is then you're still using kubectl to push in to Kubernetes into a, to create a custom resource definition. Then you have the operator that is monitoring Kubernetes, monitoring the APIs, the resources, and then applying the desired state. Now, a lot of these operators will be focused more at the infrastructure layer for scaling, for example, the brokers as well, or zookeepers, etc. So what is GitOps? And this is not only applicable to Kafka and DataOps, well, it's basically observing Git and just applying the desired state from Git. So GitOps for DataOps. Um, this is sort of what it looks like. We have an operator still, right? It's still the operator pattern. Um, and it's watching Git. So in this case, it's watching Git instead of watching Kubernetes. There are some advantages to that. I don't need Kubernetes, right? I could actually just run this thing and watch Git. Uh, we have many customers that are on Kubernetes, but also a large amount of customers that are not for various different reasons. But either way, you can deploy inside Kubernetes if you want to or outside, it doesn't matter. The point is here that it watches Git, it observes Git, and what it actually does is it speaks to lenses and lenses will then apply the desired state. And lenses could or could not be inside of, of Kubernetes as well. So what's it actually deploying? What's it actually creating? What is my desired state? Remember, this is your application landscape, your data landscape. So it could be the creation of topics, right? They could all be described as a YAML file, or it could be your application. Here we have an example of one of our SQL processes. Nice thing about the SQL processes, it's all config as code, right? We give you a bit of SQL, it will actually be injected into the runners that we have or into, the, into our Docker inside of Kubernetes. And then basically you're running Kafka stream applications, but driving it all via SQL. The same, is true for the connectors as well. Let's say you want to pull data in from a Oracle database. You know, you can describe that in config. Let's say you want to write it out to Elasticsearch. You can describe that in config. You can put it into Git. That's your immutable wall of truth. And you can have the operator, whatever it's running and whatever architecture you have to run against lenses and actually have lenses deploy your application landscape. This can also be good for moving between environments as well. Let's say you want to migrate from on-prem uh, into a cloud environment. You can just simply set up different Git branching and have the operator with each lenses act, act accordingly. So I'm nearly done because we always want to get onto the demo. Uh, benefits, right? You know, from our point of view, what we see here is that you focus on building reusable applications, right? We're also reducing the attack surface. I've got my super sensitive prod environment. I don't want to have Jenkins to be able to actually get anywhere near it or even know that it exists in some cases, right? And because I've got Git, it's also immutable and it's also auditable. So Lenses has its own auditing. We're gonna track everything that you do anyway, and we can send it out to, to place things like Splunk. However, you also get the auditing trail outside of Lenses as well, and you can fit into your standard development lifecycle. You can also roll back, right? You know, you can revert your commits. And I think there is a good separation of concerns here between actually continuous integration and continuous deployment, right? As a developer, actually, all I'm interested in doing is developing my application and committing it. And in this case, I'm not even writing any code through lenses. You're actually, you've got connectors, config, SQL config, everything else is actually config that you can describe in YAML. And 
Another bonus is I don't actually need Kubernetes for this as well, right? Uh, Kubernetes is great. I, I like Kubernetes, but I don't need it. So I can operate in some more, let's say, sensitive environments that don't want or performant environments that don't use Kubernetes. And we can also, and this is a bonus, have the operator enforce the multi-tenancy and the governance as well, because it's speaking to lenses and their lenses is making sure that people can't deploy applications that on top of topics they're not allowed to and plus we get all the audit trail as well so to summarize GitOps is a vital part of the data ops and data ops is about providing this visibility with governance at the data landscape as well you get the tech intensity we're getting that from the clouds right and we're getting that from all the other good hard work that's gone into cloud form um, Terraform, etc. Right, but what we really want to focus on, and this is what Lenses is focused on, the repeatable, rapid deployment of the data landscape. How fast can I share my data? How fast can I build a data mesh architect, architecture where teams are delivering data as a product? And what do they need to be able to do that? They need control and be able to re um, apply repeatedly topics. Right. I've created a topic. Even if I create an application, maybe I need to move the topics with it as well. Anything that's dependent, I think um, Spiros will go over this as well a bit later. Any schemas that are attached, right? If you're using Kafka, please use Avro. We don't want to burn down the rainforest trying to pass JSON all the time. Let's also um, want to move our ACLs, control lists, right? Any alert rule, rules that we have, right? Data context alerts that we have that we spoke about before data policies redaction of data as well and of course the applications so if you want to learn more lenses has a docker it has an all-in-one docker you can go and download it and it's got everything in there as well or you can actually point it at your own cluster and we do have a cloud workspace as well and if you want to speak to us and our community channel as well. There we have launchpash.com slash lenses.io. And if you want to get started with lenses.io, um, just go to lenses.io forward slash start. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Spiros because he will actually show you something working, which is a lot more exciting than me showing you slides. So Spiros, I've just made you presenter. Thanks, Andrew. Um, let me just present this. Okay. Hopefully, you can see my screen. Forgive me for uh, my laptop. It's uh, a bit out of resources. I wasn't able to, to use my Linux machine. So, what we're going to see in the demo, um, the whole architecture, which uh, it's based on what uh, Andrew described about Lens Operator. You will see that here we're going to have a, a lens is deployed in a Kubernetes cluster, more specifically in EKS in AWS. Uh, we have a processor, uh, which is the SQL app, which is called Fraud Detection. And what it does, joins two topics, does, does some kind of clever filtering, uh, and pushes this data to another topic. And of course, syncs all this stuff in S3 Connector, which uh, S3 Connector fetches from the from uh, Fetches the, the secrets from uh, the secret manager of AWS, and we have also an elastic series which is here is missing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show this. Um, so what we're gonna see in practice is that we have a master branch, right? Uh, we have exported the, all our manifests and uh, YAML files, uh, which uh, uh, is the definition of our, our SQL application, right, or of, of our connectors. Uh, we're gonna have a pull request with a development branch directly to the master branch and after the merge our lenses operator uh, is going to you know to to fetch the latest commit try to sync and if everything goes correctly we're going to have uh, everything set it up in uh, in a new environment for example right so quickly i will jump to i have two environments right now one in my uh, local machine just to to go go you go a bit through the lens product and understand um, everything is local, uh, local here right now, um, and we can see, for example, uh, uh, all the topics which uh, are included in our Kafka broker. 
it's a bit slow. My machine should probably we can go to this tab, which is already loaded. Um, and we can see all, all, all the topics which we have here. Everything is can be everything can be exported uh, with YAML files. Uh, we provide a Lenses uh, CLI tool, which uh, is uh, developed for, exact, for this uh, exact reason, uh, in order to, to make everything which is defined in Lenses uh, and YAML files and store them in a version control system like Git, right? And you can see that here we have just one connection, which is Kafka, but we can have also Elasticsearch. Uh, so we can see the data for both uh, uh, sources we have, Kafka and Elastic. And for example, if I try to search for, for location, I have a, my data catalog for all the, for all the source, which uh, um, I have the same field uh, in Kafka and in Elastic. Um, other things, there are connectors. Uh, so we are using Kafka Connect Cluster. The connectors are deployed there. All this stuff are again able to be exported in YAML files. Um, and it's, it's a bit slow for my machine, but let's jump in directly in the seal in the seal line just to get the idea. Um, hopefully, you see my terminal. Um, in our case, uh, we have, uh, as I told you, the lens line, which is part of uh, our GitOps uh, architecture. So the first thing you need to do, right, from your local machine, from, from your local environment, is to export whatever you need, right? So we have the lens line, which uh, does, for example, export processors. We are using contexts in CLI, so you can have multiple contexts. For example, I have my production environment, my staging environment, my local machine, my AWS environment in our case. So if we do the export, we can see that, uh, that a new director has been created, which is called apps. And if we go in the apps and go to SQL, we can see that we have the processor defined in a YAML file. Uh, and the name, the whole SQL uh, query which is uh, going to, to run, um, the namespace which is running, what is the pipeline name, that running process, and the app ID. Uh, and if I want to export, for example, more stuff like export uh, connectors, in our case, again, you're going to see another directory, again, defined in, in YAML which includes all the information about uh, the, connect, uh, the, the connector which has been deployed in my local machine. Um, let's see here. Uh, connectors, so we have a couple of them. For example, this one. There is another definition in which cluster is running, which is the dev cluster of the cap connect, the name and the configs which are needed, for example, for this connector, right? Mm -hmm. um, everything can be exported uh, in YAML files, topics, schemas, ACLs, quotas, uh, um, connections, which we were shown before, uh, alerts, because we, we can have alerts on also in uh, our consumer groups and so on. Um, and let's go back to the second environment, which is an AWS one. As I told you, it's an EKS cluster, and we have connected to an MSK cluster with three brochures. You can see here that this is an MSK cluster running in the EU Central One region with Zookeeper, Schema Registry, and the connect cluster. If we go to the topology screen, which shows exactly what has been deployed through Lens, for example, all the SQL processors, the connectors, you, you, you can see that it's empty. Uh, SQL, processor, SQL processor screen does include anything too, nothing for connectors. And let's try to do to see where the op operator right now is running. Let's go back to the terminal. So as, as I told you, uh, we we can run, and as Andrew mentioned before, we can run the lens operator uh, isolated by itself as a binary file in, a, in, in, in any system, but you can also deploy this in a Kubernetes environment, right? In our case, we have deployed the operator in a Kubernetes environment, uh, and you can see here, for example, that the operator is running here. Um, and we can see that tries and pulls every X minutes, three minutes in this case, to get from a specific repository, which is this one. Hopefully you can see it. This one, 
will include all the details about the manifest you have, what is the branch, master, and what was the head. Already tried to sing a few minutes before, again. So I have already prepared um, a pull request, which includes all the information which we are going to deploy. Here is a connector, for example, with, uh, as, with an Elasticsearch sync. Uh, it gets also the, the credentials I told you by the secret managers. We have created a plugin for Kafka Connect, so you can uh, fetch the, uh, the secrets for the Kafka Connect through AWS Secrets Manager. And if we try to merge this, uh, let's just question merge. Okay, now the new master has been changed, and if we wait a bit, um, because right now we are not using a webhook, we are just pulling the repository. Uh, and for the next thing is going to apply the state. So if we wait for a bit, uh, it will start to fetch again the new shed. Uh, so it creates uh, a new, uh, it fetches all the manifests which are included in, in the directories which have been set in the repository and applies the state. If something goes wrong, uh, it retries. We're going to see that uh, uh, also in the next slides. And apart from this, we are also monitoring what is happening with the sinks how many failures we have as we expose our Prometheus endpoint and metrics. So if we wait for a bit, because it is run every three minutes, we're going to see this. Sorry for the, for the time waiting a bit, but just to clarify what happened here is that you can see that there is the ops, the ops folder, right, uh, is the connectors and the SQL, as I showed you before, connectors for Elasticsearch for S3 flood detection and for the SQL processor. So let's go back and see if something goes wrong. And just to clarify also about the SQL processor, as we're waiting, you can see that the, the query that right now for our streaming single engine is much more complex. Uh, so we join two different things, the CC payments topic and the CC data topic. So in the end, we do some kind of clever, let's say, filtering for fraud detection. Uh, let's wait a bit. Sorry for this. Hopefully it's going to run right now. Yes. So it, it just fetched everything. So it tries to apply the manifest and the state. And if everything goes as it is expected, we're going to see that the sync has happened successfully. And if we go back to the environment, we're going to see that the topology, the processors, the connectors have been uh, also populated in our lenses. Synced everything successfully. All the manifest subs has been synced. And if we go back to the environment right now, we will see in the topology uh, that we have exactly what we described a few minutes before. Two topics joined uh, in the SQL processor. Does some, some kind of clever uh, filtering. Pushes this data in uh, another topic. And this data with a connector sent also to an S3. If we go and see also what happens with approach detection, for example, we can see and we can have uh, monitor, monitoring data for the SQL processor. Uh, and we can see also the topology and the little details which are included on, on the SQL processor. There are no data right now, that's, that's why you see this uh, zero stuff. Uh, and you can see that exactly what is happening with uh, stream topology, right? That uh, there is one topic and another one, uh, there's some kind of map, filtering, in the end they are joined together, yeah. another map, some kind of aggregation, and in the end they are sent the data uh, in, uh, in the topic. And we have also the connectors, which you can see. Um, Elasticsearch sync and S3 fraud. Uh, and again, if you see in the Elasticsearch, we use again our plugin for the Kafka Connect. So we fetch the secrets directly from AWS Secret Manager. So nothing to fear with Kafka Connect from now on, as the data are exposed sometimes, the, the credentials. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, as I told you, 
uh, we need to monitor the lens operator for the failures and so on. And what we have done uh, is that we expose an endpoint in uh, which is called metrics and includes also the, all, all the Prometheus uh, uh, metrics uh, which you need to monitor uh, the operator, like how many failures and so on. We're going to see the metrics. Um, and of course, you can use Prometheus to fire alerts and send these to the alert manager and have also the Grafana dashboard with visualization to see how many failures you had, uh, what's the current version of the operator and so on. So the metrics we, we, we expose other than uh, CPUs and so on, uh, we expose these specific things, how much um, time uh, uh, spent uh, the operator to, to have a synchronization from Git to lenses, how much time we spend during the fetching of the repo, how much time failed for some reason uh, the repo or the repo fetch, uh, and of course, how many times a sync succeeded and how many times a sync failed. Um, and our next steps is uh, you have seen that uh, in my previous YAML that the YAML was much more simplified of what we're going to show you right now. Uh, in in every data ops uh, platform, we want to have pipelines, right? So we we revisit right now and we introduce a new template uh, and manifests manifests for our GitOps. If you check it a bit further, you you can see that it's much more similar with uh, with the Kubernetes manifests. Uh, uh, and the idea is that right now you can tie uh, pipelines all together so you can have all the dependencies which are needed. For example, for this pipeline, which is a processor, uh, we need also write a topic. So there is a pipeline uh, which should be applied and it should also match the tags for the schemas because, for example, we can have Avro, right? So the Avro should be created first and the topics and then uh, uh, the processor. So there is an order in order to apply the whole pipeline. And this is a schema definition, which we're going to introduce to. Uh, so based on the tags, uh, the topics can match that I need this schema, so the schema goes first, then continues with the topics, and in the end, because processor knows in what pipeline should be uh, attached, uh, also I deploy it uh, finally. So everything is instrumented in the proper order, in the proper way, so no failures anymore. Um, yeah, and I think that's it by my side. Let me just pass directly to Andrew. Okay, so I will just finish off with the last two slides. Thanks for the, the demo from Lenses. So I just want to summarize by actually saying what Lens is all about, right? You know, I explained the the, data, the tech intensity. That's great, that's awesome stuff that people are doing, but what we really wanna do is build that data intensity so everybody can actually build data-driven applications. Delivered data is a product, and for that you need data context around it. For example, I've done a lot of work in uh, financial trading, but I'm still not an expert in market risk. There are people out there that can, if they get visibility to the data, they understand they'll make amazing products. So just again, last um, slide here, if you wanna download Lenses and have a go with it, uh, lenses.io slash start. And if you wanna to speak to us on our community at launchpass.com slash lenses.io. So I think now we are finished and we're happy to answer any questions that we have. Excellent, excellent. Well, we have gotten a couple questions in, but there's plenty of time. If you do have a question for Andrew or Spiros, please go ahead and use your GoToWebinar control panel and submit your questions. Let's go ahead and dive into the questions that we have gotten so far. The first one, I have used Flux. Does lenses have uh, more great features? Well, I, I, maybe I can answer about the features of, of yeah. lenses because I'm not sure whether it was targeted towards uh, <laughs> lenses or the GitOp. So, yeah, lenses have lots of features, right? You know, what lenses is actually doing is it's not only providing monitoring, but we do monitor actually your Kafka clusters as well. Um, we also provide that, the alerting as well. So this is from a platform admin. We have the role-based security, the multi-tenancy that you just can't get with, with Kafka out of the box. Um, everything 
is audited as well. And you can you can sign on in various different ways, basic auth, Kerberos, single sign on uh, with Okta, Azure Active Directory, et cetera, as well. But I think, well, actually my personal favorite is being able to view the data, being able to give the visibility to the people who understand the data. So we do that with our own SQL engine. So we can query the data inside of Kafka and actually inside of Elasticsearch as sort of like a snapshot, sort of like a relational database snapshot of what's in the, the data now. You know, we can actually do that. We haven't turned it on, but we can do that with Redis. So if you want to see me doing it on the Redis keynote speech from last year, there's there's an example there on uh, YouTube. But we can also deploy applications and we can deploy the SQL processes to actually join aggregate filter data and deploy them out into Kubernetes as well. So it's the end-to-end -end, uh, data pipelines with no code as well. You, if you if you want to write your own Python app, right, you can also deploy that and register it with lenses. So it's building up the whole application landscape. Couple that with the role-based security and the GitOps, and then you can promote it from one environment to the other. Can, can I add something more, Andrew? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think the comparison of flags and lenses, it's, it's not really valid. The operator is similar with flags, but for lenses and data ops applications, right? Uh, and to be honest, Operator is a lot of inspired, there is a lot of inspiration by Flux and Targo CD of Kubernetes, but we are talking about data ops, right? Here, it's it's a different... Uh... Yeah, so if you think about Argo CD, it has no yeah. knowledge of the um, data governance and the rule-based security. Exactly. Can you deploy this app that's allowed to read from this topic? Exactly. Whereas exactly. Lens is in conjunction with the operators handling that to give you uh, the security and the governance you want. All right, great. Uh, here's a question for you. Um, if we decide to go with on-premises uh, GitHub Enterprise, will there be any issues with the entire solution? No. Uh, the, no. the only thing the operator needs is uh, connectivity to whatever Git repo you have. Doesn't matter whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, wherever. All right. Great. Plenty of time, guys, for question and answer, period. So if you do have a question, go ahead and use your go to webinar control panel. Here's another question for you. Are you able to introspect existing topologies created using the processor API, for example? Um, if we have a SDK, so for example, you can instrument your uh, existing processes or your case streams effectively with our SDK and they will register themselves with lenses. And what we wouldn't be able to control then is stopping and starting it because it's not deployed via lenses. And we, you tell us you're on, on this machine, but we have no way to, to, to shut you down. So we can see you in the topology. You can send us your metrics. The same holds true for, um, let's say you write a Python application or a .NET application as well. We have REST endpoints to do that. What is coming soon is um, a what we call DAD, it's for data application deployment. So it's part of lenses that we will be able to deploy your own applications if you have Kubernetes, for example. Similar concept to Kubernetes, actually, you need to tell us um, a template for what your application is, what configurations it needs, what's the Docker, and then we will tie that into our um, role-based security to make sure you can deploy it against the topics that you want to read. All right, great. Uh, next question, I think this is uh, the last question that we have in. So like I, like I said before, if you have a question, go ahead and use your go to webinar control panel. Uh, can it be used for KSQL uh, DB tables or streams? So KSQL DB? So if KSQL uses Kafka topics, so we can do Kafka topics, yes. Um, some parts are rocks DB, so we wouldn't see the internals of, of that. But for any part of KSQL that is using Kafka topics, yes. All right, great. 
Well, those are all the questions that I have right now. I'll give the audience a minute or two to go ahead and submit any final questions that may come up. And while we're waiting, I do want to remind the audience that today's event has been recorded. So if you missed any or all of the presentation, or if you just want to watch it again, you'll have the opportunity to do so. Uh, after today's webinar, we will be sending out an email that contains a link to access the webinar on demand. And the webinar is also going to be living on the DevOps.com website. So you can always go look for it there. Just go to DevOps.com slash webinars, look in the on demand section. It should be right there waiting for you. We did get another pick, another question come in. Uh, how is the integration with OpenShift? Yeah, so it just work, right? You know, so as Spiro said, it's just the operator is just a binary. We can deploy inside of Kubernetes. And what it is doing is it's just speaking to Git and it's speaking to lenses. So it, you can deploy it inside um, of Kubernetes or inside of OpenShift and you can have various different arrangements. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing the operator needs is connectivity to Git and a, con a connection to um Lenses. Lenses could be inside OpenShift, the operator could be outside, vice versa. It it doesn't matter. So it will work okay. with OpenShift. Okay. Excellent. Um, okay, guys, like I said before, uh, any last minute questions you've got, go ahead and send them on in. And uh, I'll give I'll give folks uh, a minute or so. And um, No, okay, I thought maybe I saw another question coming in, but not. Okay, um, well, I guess I'll go ahead and close out the question and answer period. Oh, wait, we just, I knew there was one coming and it came. Is JMS metrics monitored? So JM, I think it means maybe JMX uh, metrics. So that's the metrics that the Kafka brokers, Kafka Connect, the schema mm -hmm. registry, et cetera, are exposing as well as the processes that we deploy, right, and the connectors we deploy. So yes, we monitor all that as well. Uh, it's how in some cases we get the consumer lag and then there's reporting on that as well. We do, if it is JMS, we do have a connector for JMS systems, um, but I think that's JMX rather than JMS. Okay, all right. Great. Well, I am going to go ahead and close out the question and answer period now, but if you have a question for Andrew or Spiros, please go ahead and still use your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, we can we can grab them before we shut things down, or uh, if we run out of time for whatever reason, um, I, the guys at Lenses will be getting a copy of all the questions that come in. So if we don't get to your question during the webinar, they will be able to see them offline and uh, probably get your question answered for you. Um, real quick, I wanted to uh, do the uh, drawing for the four twenty-five dollars Amazon gift cards. I mentioned that at the top of the hour. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. Our first winner today is Carol P. Congratulations, Carol. Our second winner today is James R. Congratulations, James. Our third winner today is. Lawrence C. Congratulations, Lawrence. And our final winner today is Daniel G. Congratulations, Daniel. We'll be following up with all four of you offline by email to get your Amazon gift card over to you. So uh, please check your inbox. If you don't see it there, check your spam folder. Uh, okay, so we've not gotten any more questions in. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just like I said, shut it down. Uh, I do want to thank the audience for uh, for the questions that did come in. And uh, and like I said before, if you have another one, you just want to put it in at the last minute, then then they'll be they'll uh, be getting a copy of all the questions and can follow up with you offline. Uh, Andrew and Spiros, thank you very much for a great presentation. Um, lots of good stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of the demos, so. Uh, Let's let those are always a lot of fun for me to watch. So thank you. Thank you very much okay. for your time, for your expertise, and really do uh, appreciate it. Okay, and uh, just just a quick reminder that uh, today's event uh, has been recorded. Um, you'll be able to see the video uh, and uh, see the slides after the webinar uh, via the link that we send out. So um, there we have it. Also want to thank the audience for joining me today. This is Charlene O'Hanlon, and I am signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.